صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله وسلم عليك يا سيدي ويا ابن مولاي يا ابا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا كل مؤمن ومؤمنة ما خاب والله من تمسك بكم وأمنا تجأ إليكم يا ليتنا يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيمة قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنكح الأيام منكم والصالحين من عبادكم وإمائكم يكونوا فقراء يغنهم الله من فضله والله واسع عليم. Swain, you're gathering with remembrance of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. as a gift to the soul of Sayyidina wa Mawlana al-Imam al Hussein and his honorable companions recite the second salawat. For Allah to shower onto this gathering with his infinite mercy and compassion and to hasten the reappearance of Sayyidina wa Mawlana sahib al-Asri wa zaman Recite the third salawat with the loudest of your voices. <laughs> the bachelor, arguably one of America's favorite TV shows. The Bachelor premiered in the year 2002, 20 years ago. 
with more than 26 seasons. And since its inception, the shows gained more popularity and relevance. For millions of Americans, for millions of people around the world, The Bachelor has become an integral part of their lives. Some shows, a single episode would attract tens of millions of views. While they only spent two million dollars per episode, They gain $90 million of advertising revenue. Not only that, now there is something called the Bachelor Nation, where millions of people around the world identify themselves to this show where they want to know the needy-greedy and the small details and the life of the bachelors. What happened to them? What are they doing now? What are they going to do tomorrow? What car are they driving? Where do they live? How much is their income? People spend their precious days and nights wanting to know the details about the bachelor's nation. What's this show all about? This show has one bachelor and 25 young, beautiful, attractive blondes, mostly 10 out of 10s, fighting over one dude. And it's a serious fight. It's a battle. And people sit there and call it a reality show. It's supposed to reflect the reality of our society. And I tell you, it's far, far, far from reality. Have you seen a 35-year-old single man and how they act in front of women? Which man has the ability to have 25 selected women fighting over him all at once at the same time? Most guys I know haven't even been on 25 dates their whole life. Let alone have 25 of them where they can fight over over him all at once. Guys at 35, if they're still single, they're probably on every single dating app. They've signed up for every single speed dating event in the 200 mile radius. trying to get themselves on a date. So how is this a reality of how we live? And what's funny about the whole situation is it's somehow supposed to be romantic. This is the most romantic reality TV show ever. There's nothing romantic about it. Uh, And the problem is, it's changed the way people behave and people think, especially the young men. It's been on for 20 years, so it's changed a lot of the culture, the way people behave and think. So there's people watching at home. There's people watching at home, and they, they start thinking like, you know, he's the bachelor, and now girls have to fight over him. 
And I really don't know why they don't put out a disclaimer in the beginning of every show saying, look, don't try this at home. This may cause serious injuries or damage. And I've seen, I, I travel a lot, so when I travel, some of the young men come and invite me to their homes. So we can sit together and speak. So they tell me, Sayyid, we're inviting you to the, to the crib, to the bachelor's pad, right? And when you show up there, it does not look like a crib. It looks more like a dungeon or a prison cell. And I ask them, I say, brothers, why aren't you married? You know, you're 30 or 35, 37. Why aren't you married? So I say, to be honest with you, there are no good girls in our community. I know what they mean by that, by the way. It's not that I don't know what they mean. And it's not just the boys. It's not just the young men in our community, the bachelors in our community. The sisters as well. They think they're the bachelorette. And that's another show that was started in 2003. What's this show all about? This show is all about 25 grown men fighting over one woman. Honestly, this is the most degrading. This is the most shameful TV show that's ever been aired on American television screens. Each of those shows, believe it or not, generate more than 250,000 tweets. That is why the Bachelor, Bachelorette Factory has become the most tweeted about TV reality show in the history of American television. It tells you the reality of people. People, this is what they enjoy. This is what they want to talk about. This is what they want to gossip about. This is what generates money. And I, <clears throat> and I read a book by one of the producers of the Bachelor, Bachelorette show. Uh, this book is, I mean, you can, you can grab this book tonight and read it. It's a quick read. It tells you about how fake, unrealistic this show is all about. There is, in 20 years, only six people got married on this show. And somehow it's supposed to create this romance and people get to know each other. And then at you, when you choose one person out of 25 who have been selected through hundreds of thousands of applicants, when you choose that one person out of the 25, you're thinking, I should live happily ever after with this person for the rest of my life. Because this person went through so many filters. And I chose this person amongst 25 others. Those beautiful 25 blondes that come, mostly with very low IQ. You know, you would think that this, this would be a good match. Only six people have gone married. And guess what? This producer says that they were paid to get married. In fact, when they interview those people after, you know, they go, they go on a date, they interview them, every single thing that they say on that interview is premeditated. It's scripted. They're told what to say. And we're sitting there behind our television screen saying, wow, this is so romantic. This is so beautiful. So when you ask the sisters as well, they also sometimes, we live in a bubble. Now we live in a bubble that, you know, she thinks she's, on the batch, she's the bachelorette as well. So without getting sidetracked, 
many of the young men in our community believe that the solution is to import. What do I mean? MashaAllah, you're all into business here in this community, so. I don't mean importing, you know, goods and services from China or different places. No, I meant something else. And look, today, with the currency so destabilized in our countries back home, devalued in Iran and Iraq and Turkey and Lebanon, and you show up there with dollars, you literally become like the American consulate. You get so many visa applications every single day. And, you know, a lot of people have only seen Disneyland on TV and pictures, so many people want to come and see what America is all about. And somehow this is supposed to ensure a joyful, very happy, enduring marriage. But studies indicate, recent studies indicate, that there will definitely be an eminent culture crash. It's unescapable. And for the sisters, I don't, I don't want to generalize, by the way. When I, when I speak tonight, I'm trying to add a little humor, but I don't want to also generalize. Some of us are waiting for Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect is never going to show up. Unless you have some connections with Imam al-Mahdi. Ajalallahu ta'ala faraja. Mr. Perfect is never going to show up because he doesn't exist. There's no such thing as Mr. Perfect that's going to come and sweep you off your feet. Yeah, when we sit there looking at Instagram and TikTok and Kylie Jenner and what's the guy's name? Scott. What? Huh? Travis Scott. Travis Scott. and how they're fighting over their own private jets. Are we gonna take my private jet or your private jet? And this is the biggest problem they have. Or, no, you're more realistic than that. You see your friends who are married and they post their pictures, their eight pictures, with their family, with their friends on social media and they look so happy and they look so devoted to each other and they look like and now it's become a trend where couples travel with each other and they post pictures and videos and they uh, go to restaurants together and they're blogging together. And it just looks so beautiful. Looks like they have absolutely no problems whatsoever. And I tell you that is far from the truth. There is no such thing as a perfect couple, perfect marriage, Mr. Perfect, Miss Perfect. There is no such thing. Those same people who are posting those pictures before the picture and after the picture, they had an argument. Because she was saying, I want you to put your hands around me in the picture, and he said, I don't feel like it. So they had their whole argument, but then when they were taking the pictures, it was all smiles. It's not all milk and honey, believe me. We have to be more realistic. We have to be more fair and tolerant. And I tell you why I chose to talk about this. Because I feel that the bachelor, bachelorette lifestyle of those who attend majalis, practicing followers of the Ahlul Bayt, needs to change. And it needs major change. Brother, If you are a follower of Imam al Hussein, if you are a follower of the Ahlul Bayt, 
If you attribute yourself to Amir al Mu'mineen and Imam Hussein, the only thing that resembles your Shi'ism shouldn't be the the Dhulfaqar chain that you put here on your neck. And you go to the gym and you work out and you post pictures online with Dhulfaqar. Or tattoos of the Dhulfaqar or Ya Ali or something like that. Resemble the Ahl al-Bayt with your akhlaq, with your mannerism, with your honesty, with your integrity, with your generosity. with your kindness, with your compassion. And I want to talk about some common mistakes that single folks make. Why? Because you're in an age where you are about to start a very important integral part of your life, and that is marriage. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, marriage is the most beloved institution in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the most honorable institution in Islam. It is holy. Would you ever consider being unholy in front of the Kaaba? Would you stand in front of the Kaaba and do something that is immoral? Would you commit a sin? Would anybody do anything indecent in front of the Kaaba? Why? Allah says the honor of a mu'min and a mu'mina is more important to me than the Kaaba. Those are my words. This is a hadith Qudsi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're about to start a family, think of it as greater and most holy and more sacred than the holy Kaaba. And I'm going to talk about this soon, inshallah. And I see that people today are making common mistakes. And this is what the guys mean when they say there is no good girls in our community. There are plenty of good young women in our community. And this is what the sisters mean, the ladies mean when they say there are no good men in our community. There are many good individuals, noble individuals, honorable young men in our community. So what's happening here? I'll tell you what's happening. Number one, for the men, you ain't no Drake. Please. Understand this. What do I mean? Some guys, the way they reflect themselves, they portray themselves, is that he is, number one, on a permanent vacation. He's on a permanent vacation. Always going around, smoking argila 4 a.m., posting 4 a.m., he's smoking argila. Shisha, at the Shisha joint. He's irresponsible. Seems like he's the most careless dude ever. Obviously, nobody wants to start a family with you, my brother. Before you think of marriage, and before you complain about there are no good girls in our community. You have to start with your own self. Stop thinking about marriage for a moment. Stop thinking about wanting to find someone. 
You have to settle down yourself. You have to start acting with responsibility as an adult. Ask yourself, you know, if I was a woman, would I want to marry myself? Would I want to marry, you know, you? And answer yourself. That is, that is something very serious to think about. So what, do you, what should I start with? Start with fixing your bed when you wake up in the morning. Make your bed. You think this is funny. I swear to you, wallahi, many of the men in our community. It takes 30 seconds. Make your bed. Learn how to use a vacuum cleaner. You know, watch a YouTube video. How do you turn it on? How do you vacuum? Start acting more responsibly. Make better decisions. Don't stay in this teenage phase. You're no longer a teenager. Now you're an adult. You want to become a father. You want to start a family. You're going to be responsible for other individuals. If you're out there every day smoking shisha until four in the morning, when are you going to wake up and go to work? Work hard. Don't say, no, inshallah, when I get married, now I have my freedom. When I get married, I have to work hard. No, start working hard today. Take life seriously. Most importantly, cut some of your friends. Look, you were a friend with this guy in high school. Maybe college. Do you still need him? Is he, is he really a friend? Is he somebody positive in your life? Yes, you may love this person. You truly love this person, but sometimes you need to cut that relationship. If this person is calling you every night, yalla, shisha is ready. The faham is on the fire. Cut this guy out of your life. I'm not saying don't ever smoke shisha, don't ever have fun, don't ever hang out with you, but don't get addicted. And look, some people, let, let me be honest with you. Some people, they come from money. MashaAllah, his dad, he's very wealthy. And he's giving this guy $10,000 at the beginning of each month. Let him go and do whatever he wants with it. Is that the case for you? You got to hustle. You got to work hard. Today you are young. Get yourself in the habit of waking up early. Sleep early. Exercise. Think of yourself. Think of your health. Get a haircut. I see some people, wallah, some of the youth today. I'm thinking, why? Is there no barber in your city? What's happening? Get a haircut. Fix your beard. Some of them, his beard starts by his eyes and it ends, you know, it, it gets connected to his chest hair. <laughs> Groom yourself. Take care of yourself. Iron your clothes. Dress properly. Don't dress like you're in the ninth grade. Well, I've seen some 30-year-olds, they dress like they're, you know, in the ninth grade. This is inappropriate. This is not manly. Ask this side, this side of the hall. Does anybody want to get married to a 30-year-old man who dresses like a ninth grader? Raise your hands. It's common sense. Those are very important things, brothers and sisters. I kid you not, because I see people now in their 30s, and they're still single, and, and look, things have changed. Look at, go read Pew. You know, in, in the 90s, in the 80s, people were getting married in their 20s. Then it shifted in the 90s to 25s. Now it's shifted to 30s. People like this comfort. You know, I'm going to just be lazy. I don't want to be responsible for anybody or anything. 
I'm just going to live single for the rest of my life. Yeah, whenever, you know, maybe I'll get married. This maybe I'll get married doesn't work in Islam. In Islam, the reality of the issue is if you stay single until you're 30, you've piled a lot of sins. Do not fool yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah tells us, if you want to purify yourself and face Allah on the day of judgment with purity, with honor, with integrity, with less sin on your backs, get married. That is why when you get married, what happens? مَنْ تَزَوَّجَ فَقَدْ أَحْرَزَ نِصْفَ دينه. You complete half of your faith by getting married. You protect yourself. You protect your integrity. So the first thing, brothers, before you think of marriage, because I know people who do get married before they change those habits, and he's still sleeping until noontime, and his wife is working. He's still going out until 4 a.m., smoking shisha with his friends. He's still on constant vacation. He still doesn't make his bed. He doesn't, he doesn't feel respond. That marriage is bound to break. That's why we have skyrocketing divorce rates, rates in our community now. Once you change your habits, you feel good about yourself, then you will attract the right individual, I guarantee you. You don't have to look for them in the wrong places. They will come to you. Allah will send them in your way. Now, sisters, please remain seated during this portion. Keep calm. Can we have some security? Look, for the sisters, I'll say this. I'll say, unfortunately, we, the sisters, also portray on social media what they really aren't. And that is the truth. And I don't want to generalize. I don't want to say every single one. Some of you will say, I don't even have social media. I'm not talking about you. Okay? I'm referring to what's causing this problem. So now we know, when the sisters say there are no good guys in the community, we know what the problem is. They want somebody responsible. They want somebody who's ready to start a family. Now what do the guys mean when they say there's no good girls in our community? Look, I know a lot of the sisters, they help their mothers in the kitchen, for example. They cook, they clean. But they never post that on social media. That she's helping her mom in the kitchen or she's... Or she attends a majalis in full hijab. She's part of the community. She's volunteering. That never shows up on your feed. But what shows up on their feed? Oh, I'm struggling to get into Louis Vuitton. It's been like two hours already. And I'm trying to buy my Louis Vuitton bag. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a hard, terrible day. And, uh, yes, nobody wants to see your nails on social media either. I just got out of the salon and, you know, we all know you have nails, it's normal, every human being has nails. Men don't want to marry your Louis Vuitton purse, nor your nails. Believe me. A man who's ready to get married wants to marry you for your akhlaq, for your morality, for your ethics, for your patience, for your community service, for your haya. This is the person you should attract, at least. This is the person that 
is ready to settle down. And that comes off as superficial. You may not be a superficial person, a materialistic person. But that is intimidating. It's intimidating. This guy is thinking if she's buying herself a Louis Vuitton purse right now, I'd have to buy one every single year. And that's only for her birthday. And then comes the anniversary. And then comes this. And then comes that. I'm not ready for that. Believe me, it plays a huge role. At this moment, this is indeed not a joke. I guarantee you. Now let's ask this side. Do we even need to ask? There you go. Take this from me. I know many of you will be upset. Some of you will not like what I'm about to say. If you're a single woman, prior to getting married, give up the Louis Vuitton bag. Give it up. Donate it to me. I'll know what to do with it. <laughs> do not... I know many of the sisters in our community, they have a passion for faith and motherhood and taking care of their families and and iman and faith and akhlaq but that's not what's appearing on your feed that's not what you're showing others and that's what guys mean by there are no good girls in our community because he's not ready to settle down for somebody who he thinks he can't keep up with the only way for me to get into her heart is through the Louis Vuitton bag if I can't afford getting her one you know, she won't like me, she won't love me. Those are common mistakes that I believe have created a huge roadblock for people in our community to get to know one another. Another issue is, brothers and sisters, it is the community centers themselves, the leadership in our communities. We have many sort of programs now. Ashura, Fatimiya, Arba'een, Hawza, uh, Feeding the Homeless, there are many, many. But we do not have a proper method for people to get to know one another. Now there are some attempts, but I don't like them. Why? Because the first time this young woman sits across from a young man, they have to talk about marriage. She doesn't even know him. It's very weird for you to sit across from somebody for the very first time. Salamu alaikum. What's your name? My name is Ali. What's your name? My name is Fatima. How many kids do you want to have? It's just it's weird. Let them be in a structure where they're attracted to each other's minds, intellect, spirituality. Let them get to know each other first without having to talk about marriage. Without having to talk about things that make things awkward. Because, you know, maybe she'll talk to him, he'll talk to her, maybe they see each other and such. And, and they, won't, they don't want to get to know each other for marriage. The second item on my list that I want to talk about is we have to treat this issue as an act of worship. It's not high school anymore. Now, this is not, you know, a fling or you're just getting to know someone to kill some time. No, this is about marriage. This is about family. So treat it like an act of worship. Why? Why do I say an act of worship? I just told you, Rasulullah says, Man tazawwaja faqad ahraza nisfa deena. Half of your faith is completed through marriage. Salah, siyam, hajj. Those are acts of worship. Do you take them lightly? Do you go to hajj and you say, well, I don't have an ahram. Let me just wear my shorts and show up. You don't do that. No, you want to know all the laws and regulations and rules and you, don't want, you want to do it right and when you stand up for salah 
You don't say, well, I don't have wudu today. Let me just pray without wudu. No, you're going to go and do wudu because you know that salah without wudu is incomplete. It's an incomplete act of worship. It's not even accepted. So what about an act of worship that guarantees half of your faith? A lot of people don't look at marriage as an act of worship. It is a part of your life that is also an act of worship. You seek nearness to Allah through this act. Once you look at it as an act of worship, you're going to think differently about it. Why? Because can you seek nearness to Allah? My brothers, sisters, listen to me. Can you seek nearness to Allah through something that is materialistic? No. You cannot... Look, you cannot completely occupy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want the youngsters to also listen to this. I'll kind of make it more relevant so you understand me better. You cannot fully bring Allah into your hearts where Allah is the only thing occupied within your heart if there is something else called hubbu dunya the love of this dunya, the materialistic world. Now that could be, you know, love for popularity, that could be love for money, that could be love for political gain, that could be love for, you know, building a, an empire, whatever it is. And I've said this before, it doesn't mean that you go broke, it doesn't mean that you don't work, it doesn't mean that you don't enjoy this life, no. But you don't let those things control you. You are in control. They're at your dis they, are, they are at your disposal. They don't make you who you are. You honor the money. You honor the house. You honor the car. You honor that political position. Not vice versa. So, when it comes to marriage and this act of worship, don't look at materialistic things because you cannot seek those things and, and, and go towards Allah with them. In other words, when you're looking at somebody for marriage, the first thing on your list should not be looks. The first thing on your, look, on your list shouldn't be looks. Believe me. I know many people, many people who have gotten married only because of looks and soon enough it's faded away. Soon enough she's no longer beautiful in his eyes. And vice versa, soon enough he's no longer beautiful in his eyes. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم صلوا عليه بأعلى صوات says if a person gets married to someone solely based on their physical appearance and physical attractions they will never find happiness this is رسول not جواد قزويني رسول الله says this and I would take his word for it you know I know people who are not even Looking to get married. It's not even, you know, on their list now. But as soon as he sees somebody and she's beautiful, now he's out of a sudden going to his mom. Halla, halla, halla. Halla bidi ajjawas. And his mom, of course, she has a list of all his cousins and everybody ready for him. So she says, yes, inshallah, I'll take you this summer to Lebanon. And you get married. He says, No. I have found someone. And he's blinded now, blinded. All he wants is to get married to this person. But in the end of the day, there is something else that you should look for as well. Her akhlaq, her mannerism, her iman, her virtues, her integrity. And I want to also add this. It shouldn't be 
You know, it's not the most important item on the list, but it is also important, her family. And also the same thing applies for the sisters. Don't marry a man just because he's good looking. And the second is money. It's, it's embarrassing to say. It's not the nicest thing to say, but it's real, so I'm going to have to say it. I'm not here to please anybody besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I see some men going after a woman just because her father-in-law is a millionaire. He wants to marry the father's, the father-in-law's money. Shame on you. What kind of man are you? What kind of man are you? You're not even a man. To marry a woman because of her dad's money? Take this guy's picture and put it somewhere. Show it. Show your father's. <laughs> and sisters as well. You know, it's nice. It's nice to marry somebody who's stable. It's nice to marry somebody who has a job. It's nice to marry somebody. But, you know, don't picture yourself that there's this guy. He's making 250000 500000 $1 million a year. Now, at the moment, he's driving a Porsche 911. It's convertible and... You picture him, he's sitting in a minivan with two cute car seats in the back and he's driving and taking you on a road trip. The truth is that's probably never going to happen. And after you marry this man who is very wealthy, who is rich, who is doing very well for himself, he's probably working at least 15 hours a day, 14 hours a day. He's probably working seven days a week. Are you ready for that? Or after a year or two, you're going to say, well, Habibi, I've had enough money. I have the Black American Express. I shop. I, I'm bored now. You know, I want you to spend more time with me. He says, I can't. This is who I am. I'm a CEO of this company, and I'm, you know, thinking of pursuing my plans and this and that. And next thing you know, the money is meaningless now. So what do we base marriage for? What is the criteria? The criteria is told to us by the master of this majlis, Al-Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein. He says, marry someone that has faith and akhlaq. Iman and akhlaq. Those should be the number one and two on your list. And then other things should be there as well. I'm not, you know, undermining the value of whatever else creates compatibility and understanding in marriage. But if there is everything, there is money, there is looks, there is wealth, there, but there is no akhlaq, he gets an F. If, they, if this woman, this young woman, every single box is checked, except iman or akhlaq, she also fails. Do not make this mistake. Also, before I conclude, I want to say this. While in the process, while you're a bachelor and bachelorette, getting to know another person, making you know, the necessary steps for the big decision in your life, Please take this very seriously. Now we're no longer joking. Be honorable. Be honorable. I have seen time and over again now. Just last week, somebody introduced me to a young woman who was contemplating suicide. We had to save her from taking her own life. Why? Because she trusted a man and when she told him, I will not marry you. I don't want to marry you. This is not a, you know, I'm not forced to marry you. What did he do? He sent indecent pictures of her to her father. 
Be honorable. How can you follow? How can you call yourself a human? I'm not even saying the follower of Imam Al Hussein. A follower of Imam Al Hussein wouldn't even those thoughts wouldn't even cross his mind, let alone he would do them. Be honorable. The same thing goes for the sisters. If you were to get to know someone and it didn't work out, be honorable. Do not go after his family, his reputation, his name, his career. Look at social media today. People have no breaks on social media. They're talking about things that are extremely private. Destroying people's lives. The next thing you know, this person will take it their life. And you're responsible. Allah and the Day of Judgment will hold you responsible for ruining someone's reputation. For wrecking their homes. This young woman, her father had a heart attack. And you better believe she's not going to marry him now. Be honorable, brothers. Fear Allah. I'll say this, on the member of Imam al Hussein. maybe if you skip your salah once here and there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not halal, it's not okay, I'm not telling you it's okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and there is something called, what? Qadha. You do qadha. You stand up, you say, oh Allah, I was stupid, I didn't pray, now I'm going to pray, Allahu Akbar, qadha. Allah will forgive you. Siyam, qadha, hajj. You had to go to hajj. This year you couldn't go, you go next year. But if you wreck someone's home, there is no qadha. There is no making up for that. If you go after someone's reputation, and many of the times we don't even know if this is true or not. When a rumor is spread, people will start spreading it like wildfire as if it's a fact. As if they've seen it with their own eyes and they've heard it with their own ears. Rasulullah tells someone who is spreading a rumor, he says, think about what you're saying. He says, Ya Rasulullah, no, I'm... He took him out, he says, Do look, look at the sun. Does the sun exist? He says, yes, I saw it with my own eyes. He says, if you see something like this, then you can be a witness. If you're not as sure as what you're seeing now, don't speak of it. And even sometimes you see something. You hear something and you know it's true. You saw it with your own eyes. You heard it with your own. Why are you going and spreading those rumors? Why are you going after people's reputation and people's lives? This is why many people remain single in our community. Because somebody somehow said something. They didn't get, you know, they didn't go on with the marriage. Things didn't work out. Now those two families... Their life plan is to destroy this young woman and this young man. Let it go. Move on with your life. She said no to your son, khalas. Move on with your life. Don't go after her reputation. Wallah, she's, you know, she's 35 years old. She's not married. I wonder why. You don't need to wonder why. It's none of your business. Or this guy, yeah, we heard this or that about him. Don't do that to anybody. And if, none of you do that inshallah, but if, and for those who are listening to me elsewhere, if you hear such things, don't let it be music to your ears. Don't sit there and enjoy gossip. Because one day the same thing will happen to you. If you're sitting with somebody that gossips, it's just a matter of time until the bucket stops with your name. Stop them right there and then. Say, look, I'm not here for that. I don't need to listen to this. No, 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 it's true. I don't care if it's true or not. It's none of my business. I have to fix myself. I have to fix my own problems. I'm a fallible person with full of flaws. Why do I need to hear about other people's problems and their mistakes? And if you really care about this person, you genuinely care, you wouldn't talk about it in public. Because this is the new trend now. People talking about things on social media extremely, in an extremely aggressive way, and they say, 
just because we care about this person. Really? If you care about this person, you would find him. You would find her. You would call them. You would ask them. You would advise them. You wouldn't tarnish their reputation all over the internet or within the community. And sometimes you find people today, they're suffering. They're suffering. She's 30, she's 40 years old. Just because someone spread rumors about her, somebody spread lies about her, she's no longer married. And it's not fair. And if there is one thing that we ought to learn from the majalis of Imam al Hussein is humanity, integrity, morality, ethics, akhlaq. Imam al Hussein was not willing to compromise his principles of akhlaq even on the last moment of his life. Imam Zainul Abideen, this is your Imam. This is your Imam. You attribute yourself to Zainul Abideen. What does your Imam say? He says, if the killer of my father entrusted me with the dagger in which he cut my father's throat with, I would return his amanah to him. This is the integrity of Ahl al-Bayt. This is the akhlaq of Ahl al-Bayt. This is the morality of Ahl al-Bayt. And this should be the outcome. This is how we graduate from Ashura, brothers and sisters. We don't graduate just with tears for Imam al Hussein or wearing black for Imam al Hussein or dropping a donation in the donation box. We graduate with akhlaq, with morality, with ethics, with iman, with taqwa. And I tell you this in conclusion, my concluding statement is, if you're looking for someone, make sure they bear the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. There is nothing that beautifies a person more than if they bear the love of Imam al Hussein. They are a Husseini. And for you to have offsprings that are Husseini, that love Imam al Hussein, that want to be the servants of Imam al Hussein, because this is how Shi'azam was inherited until today. People who bury, bear the love of Imam al Hussein. They are proud servants of Imam al Hussein. They are the khuddam of Imam al Hussein. And tonight, I want to take you to a special individual in the camp of Imam al Hussein. And she is known to be Babul Hawaij. So for those who have hajat, Whatever your haja may be, I've take, I'm going to take you to the right door tonight. Wallahi, you will not go empty-handed. Millions of people have tried her. And she is the three-year-old beloved daughter of Imam al-Hussein, Ruqayya. Ruqayya who most resembled Fatima to Zahra. Imam al Hussein would tell Sayyidah Zainab, take care of all my kids, all my orphans. But specifically Ruqayya. Why? Because she looks like my mother Fatima. And Imam al Hussein came with his family, he arrived to Karbala, he camped there. And every day he would go and spend time with his children. And they felt what was happening. They felt what was coming. Some of them would ask him, Oh, Father, why are you treating us like we're orphans? When are you going to take us back to the city of our grandfather, Rasulullah? When will we go back to Medina? What are we doing here? And soon enough, brothers, sisters... 25,000 men came and stood in front of your Imam, Imam al Hussein. And Imam al Hussein started telling his family and children, preparing them for the Aza, preparing them to be taken as captives, preparing them to become orphans. But to this little girl, she was inseparable from her father. She was 
so close to him. So on the 10th of Muharram, Imam al Hussein came and he stood in front of the tents and he called out, Al Wida, Al Wida, Ahl Bayti, Al Wida. Halumu ilayya ya rabab wa ya sukayna wa ya um kulthum wa ya ruqayya Al-Wida, Al-Wida Qad qarba minkum al-iftijar They all came except Ruqayya Ruqayya wasn't there so Imam al Hussein said, where is Ruqayya? They said, Ruqayya is not coming. She cannot say goodbye to you. So he went, he held her, he hugged her. They cried and Imam al Hussein left. They took those children as captives. They took those children as captives. I want to tell you one line. Until they reached Damascus, Allahu Akbar. On the way, what they saw, what they heard, what happened to them, you all know. When they reached Damascus after this long journey, this girl woke up in the middle of the night. She said, Amma Zainab, Ainabi al Hussein. Where is my father Hussein? She said to her, Your father has gone on a long journey. He will not return, but we will go to him. Allahu Akbar. She said, No, my father Hussein, he was just here. I was playing with him and I was telling him, Oh Father, you should have seen what they've done to us throughout this journey. You should come and see the scars on the face and the back of my aunt Zainab. You should see how they were treating us. I showed my father my earring, my ears and how they took off the earring from my ears. Where is my father Hussein? Aina Abi al Hussein. Her cries reached the palace of Yazid, this drunken man, this Mal'oon. What did he do with the granddaughter of Rasulullah? Ya Sahib al Zaman, Anta al Muazza. We tell him, oh, our 12th Imam, we apologize. We apologize that you have to hear such tragedies and calamities that befell onto your household. But what, imagine what happened to the heart of Imam al Hussein. We tell him tonight, Sayyidana wa Mawlana, Ya Aba Abdullah, we ask you in the name of your three year old Ruqayya to take a glance at this majlis. Many of, has, many of us have sins, many of us have hajat, many of us have come to you. Not for anything besides love that we bear for you in our hearts. All of us together. Ya Sayyidana wa Maulana Inna tawajjahna Brothers, sisters, all of us together, those who want to show their love for Imam al Hussein. I know you're all the lovers of Imam al Hussein. Ya Sayyidana wa Maulana, Inna Tawajjahna, Wa Tawassalna Bika Ilallah. وَقَدَّمْنَاكَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ حَاجَاتِنَا يَا وَجِيهًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ I don't hear the brothers and sisters upstairs in the second floor, in the back, all of us together. يَا وَجِيهًا عِنْدَ One more time to get that special glance for Imam al Hussein from Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, for he is the master of all those Aza. Ya wajihan inda Allah. What did this Mal'oon do? This Mal'oon says, this cry of a girl, this girl, what does she want? She's crying, she wants her father. What did he say? Take the head of her father to her. 
They brought a basket. They put it in front of this little girl. She said, "Inni ma talab tu taama." I didn't ask for food. What did they bring for me? They told her, "Whatever you ask for is in this bucket." She came and she removed the cloth from the top of the bucket. She couldn't believe what she saw with her eyes. It was the head of her father, Abba Abdullah Al Hussein. But he looked so pale. He looked so different. His face was full of dust. His beard was full of blood. She took the head. She grabbed it. She held it. She said, "Ya Abba, man al ladi haz al ras al sharif, man al ladi aytamani ala صغر سني الله أكبر. We say to him, Ya Aba Abdullah, we are your servants and the servants of your family and the servants of your companions and the servants of your servants, and we are here only and only out of love for you, Ya Aba Abdullah. لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين brothers all of you all of you especially the young men the soldiers of Hussein لبيك يا حسين ما شاء الله ما شاء الله Now let's beat our chest a little bit as well. لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين One more time لبيك يا حسين